early morning exercises. Uh, we wake up with you all around the country. Well, rugby league player Alex McKinnon remains in an induced coma this morning after the Newcastle Knights forward was involved in a tackle gone horribly wrong in the team's Monday night clash with the Melbourne Storm. So a lot of people are asking, is the game safe? We're joined right now at the Beach House by spinal neurosurgeon Dr Jonathan Ball from Royal North Shore Hospital. Doctor, thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you, James. Thank you, Natasha. I mean, we're talking about this because it's a really serious injury. Absolutely. But um, can you take us through exactly what happened? Uh, uh, the C4 and the C5 were dislocated of Alex McKinnon's yeah. spine, is that right? That's right. So in the neck, we refer to the bones there as the C bones, the cervical bones, and there are seven of them. And they're all stacked on top of each other and separated by a disc. And a dislocation is when one bone will actually move out of place in relation to the other. We uh, look at that tackle there, I mean, obviously his neck goes in a really, really difficult angle there, an awkward tackle, but it, it's not the most high impact thing you see on a rugby league field. What are some of the dangers and risks in an environment like that with your spine? The, the danger is having force applied through the spine, um, particularly when it's through the head and then straight up through the spine. And Depending on whether your head's flexed or straight, you may get different injuries, but it's really the force of your body being accelerated and the weight of your body being accelerated towards the ground, that force from the head being forced through the spine. And then as the bone dislocates, it can impinge on the spinal cord and therefore cause the actual spinal cord damage. Watching that vision is so incredibly mm. confronting. You just watch it when he's, you know, pounded into the ground. Is it really safe to play these sports? I, I, are the injuries worse now than what they were even 20 years ago? There's not great evidence that actually injuries are getting any worse. Sports are not amongst the most common causes of spinal cord injury. And amongst contact sports, we know if there's 100,000 people playing a sport in a year, the rate for rugby league is about two people for every 100,000 people a year. For rugby union, it's about three. American football is about one. Something like ice hockey has a rate of eight people per 100,000 wow. people might have a devastating spinal injury in any given year. So he now has had surgery. Is it, will he be able to play football ever again? Or will he be able to function properly ever again? I'm not looking after Alex, and so the information I have is all from the Newcastle Knights releases and the NRL releases. My understanding is those bones have been realigned, which is an important part of treatment to take the pressure off the spinal cord. They've then been fused or fixed in that position. If he has had a bad injury to the spinal cord, which it sounds like he has, there's a long process of rehabilitation, intensive physiotherapy, occupational therapy, both to maximise the recovery in the spinal cord, and if he has disability, which is always devastating, to maximise his ability to function with that disability so he can lead the most full life. But I think it would be unlikely on the information we have that he'd return to playing football again. Doctor, we're seeing growing evidence about the dangers of playing sports, including head injuries. We've even seen a league player, Ian Roberts, come out saying he's still having problems with the amount of head injuries he's had over his football career. You've got two sons. Would you let them play football? Um, in terms of playing football, I would. My sons play the round ball game at the moment, or my oldest son does. Um, if he had a particular desire to play rugby union, like I did when I was younger, I played some rugby, um, I would let him, but I think the important thing is making sure the appropriate precautions are taken and to make sure that we make the game as safe as possible. Like I said, sports aren't the number one cause of spinal cord injury uh, and there's probably greater risks in a population not being active, not being healthy, um, rather than actually uh, playing sport, which actually has so many benefits for our health. Thanks for joining us this morning, Doctor. It's been a pleasure. Thank Interesting you. Interesting insight there. And, of course, our thoughts are with Alex and his family. We hope he makes a speedy and full recovery. Would you let your boys play no, rugby league? No chance. Rugby union? No chance. AFL? No chance. <laughs> Soccer. <laughs> That's Football, it. yes. Okay. Oh, as a mum, it's just watching them play. And I know they're going to want to play, mm. and I've, I'm going to get to that discussion later. Details after the break, but no, 